Bonjour, je m'appelle Alexandra Vidal and um, this is a French bakery that I come to. This is the only place you can get good bread in Raleigh, to be honest. Um, American bread is uh, pretty awful to us, especially when we're used to uh, baguettes and um, just bread American people cannot pronounce and it's uh, amazing. So this is where we come for bread. <laughs> this is pretty much your typical bakery. Um, people call it a pâtisserie or it can be called a um, boulangerie. A boulangerie is more for like bread. This is what you'd be seeing on every single corner that you turn in France. Uh, my favorite is the big loaf, which is called La Femme. There it is. Um, it's so pretty. Yes, I came to show them, show them how France does it. The good, yep, how France does it. Luckiest. So did you ever try bread before? Pita bread. Uh, more of a sandwich bread kind of guy. <laughs> anyway, so this is a, a Orla Farm. And this is how we are going to cut this farm. So look at that crispy, crispy it is. All right. So if you want to grab a piece, and don't eat yet, OK? OK. So now I want you to squeeze the bread next to your nose and get all the aroma from it, OK? <laughs> so enjoy, eat, go ahead, chew. Don't forget to chew. Don't swallow. You need to shoot for this one. Okay? Very flavorful. Parfait. Parfait. It tastes like French. <laughs> Alex, c'est pain au chocolat. Can you repeat? Pain. 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 Go ahead. Why is it so fun? It's kind of like a croissant, except I hate it when people call them croissants because they're really not croissants. It's like layers of pastry puff, puff pastry with two pieces of chocolate inside, and it's amazing. So you can't go wrong with these. Bon appétit. Mm. أنا اسمي رامي عون ونحن هون اليوم بالنيوماند on Barrow Road in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the bakery and the establishment of the Saleh family. As you can see behind me, there's photos of them when they first came here and opened up the bakery. And then that picture there is a depiction of one of the villages in Lebanon. I think it's pretty accurate to, uh, to what theirs looked like up in the mountains. And this place is very significant to me and my family. When my dad came to America, he came on an academic scholarship. Uh, with the Prime Minister, they all came on a plane and he was dropped off in Indiana to go to school there. And he had to learn English, he didn't know a word of English. Then he transferred here after two years to NC State and he had to relearn the language after coming to the South. It's a heavier accent. <laughs> and he had a budget of $15 a week. Oh and so, yeah, so he would come here and he'd buy lebne and pita bread and lived off of that for almost a year and a half. It was hard at first, but now he made it and he's very successful. This is the, the za'atar. This is the sesame with uh, olive oil and other uh, mixed ingredients. And you can put it on the bread and eat it just like that, or you can put it on a piece of pita bread and bake it in the oven. It comes out hot and it's very good. How do you guys like it? Good? good. Are you used to it? Have you ever tried it? I've tried it here. Rental salad. Yeah. They have ingredients for everything as well. Um, come on, let's take a look. What exactly is halva again? My dad likes to eat it with molasses and bread after dinner sometimes. But what does this halva taste yeah. like? Because yeah. there's nothing like that in in China. <laughs> we have like two kinds of halva. There's like a dessert, and then there's like this. With pistachio, I think. What is it? Yeah, yeah, even we have that. It's like a, it's oh, like a dessert. Different kinds. And like we eat it as like holy offerings sometimes. Really? Yeah. The orange uh, blossom water, fleur d'orange, we have that in France as well, so we cook with that all the time. Sometimes it's called mazahir. You can put it with a couple different things. Uh, it has some, some, somewhat a strong taste. Yeah. It's in our ice cream too, but kind of, yeah. That's so funny, there's like things in French. Growing up, my parents were 
French and English and Arabic educated, so some of the words like, say bonjour, merci, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I can count to ten in French. <laughs> Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. Hello, I'm Stefan Lee, and here we are at the Raleigh Charter High School where my um, Chinese school is situated. So for almost 20 years, um, our Chinese school has been providing cultural and language knowledge to American Chinese kids. So when I was small, my parents would always like, they, they kind of taught me how to like initially speak Chinese. and. You know, it was it was very culturally important to know Chinese because at home we always speak Chinese. In France, you know, they take like about six or seven different types of language classes, and uh, the primary second language for them is English. So whenever I go to them, I um, I have to like speak French English, what we call franglais, which is anglais and français. So. And any other culture, it can't be learned just in school. Mm -hmm. You have to be immersed in it. I encountered this cultural barrier when I went to China this past summer. I actually went by myself. I lived in a uh, college dorm for a month or so, and the first few days, uh, I, I, I think I kind of struggled to like, live properly, because in China, the showers have uh, special water heaters, and you can't just turn the knob to, turn, to heat up the water. I didn't know this, so I had like a few days of cold showers. It was kind of uncomfortable, but yeah, it was a very interesting experience. All right, so um, uh, you want to learn a Chinese character? Yes, please. Um, well, since we talked about it earlier, rice. Um, rice is shaped like an asterisk. Does it matter which stroke you put um, first or not? Oh well, yeah, there's there is actually a sequence for doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> close enough. Yeah. Is that right? Um, yeah, that, that's that that's right. Um, I think you're. Well, I would put the lines more farther out and bigger. Oh, well, that looks. Well, yeah, it looks better. Is that better? Yeah. How do you say Alex or tree or whatever? Tree. <laughs> bread. Yes. Let's do bread. Bread was requested. Okay. Um. <laughs> That looks like that's a that's one character. And, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mian Bao. Bao. This Bao. is bread, and um, it's two characters. Bao is the term for bun, and Mian is grain. Grain, grain. There yeah. Are. So um, there's some words that are a combination of two different words. So the word for sun is ru. It's pretty much a box with a line in it because like, it derived from the drawing for sun, which was a circle and a dot. The word for yue, which is moon, is like that because I think it was like derived from a crescent. And if you put those two words together, you get ming, which means bright because you know it's the sun and the moon together, they're bright. That's actually really pretty. That's poetic. All right. Yeah, everyone knows the phrase ni hao. Yeah, that, this is the hao for ni hao. Ni is you, and pretty much it's like the English slang, uh, you good? You good? In Arabic, uh, the word is tamim. Tamim. Yeah, tamim. Are you doing well? I guess one in Farsi could be like chetori means how are you? And then um, khuba means I'm good. Chitori. Chitori. Uh, English, we say you good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mira Nam Shweta hai. And Mira Nam Divya hai. And that means my name is Shweta in Hindi, and that means her my name, name is Divya. This is a Sri Venkateshwara temple. And so um, in the Hindu mythology, we believe in one God with many forms. And um, 
usually what happens in a traditional temple is um, we'll come, we pray to the deities, there's different prayers that are said. I don't know if you can also like, hear in the background that constant Om. Om Brahmaya Namaha is actually one of our, I guess, universal prayers. It basically means, Lord, I bow to you. So this is um, haldi or turmeric. It's used as a spice in a lot of Indian cooking and it's also used as a holy offering every time you've been to the temple. So what you do is you take your ring finger on your right hand, you dip it into the ghee, and then into the haldi, and then you put it on the person's forehead, like that. So ring finger on the right, and then yeah, I can't even see myself. In between your, yeah. Right there? Yep. Did yeah. I get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to get too much. It'll stop. Is that a lot? Yeah. Right here? <laughs> Did that work? Okay. Indian dance is very heavy on like gracefulness of the hands and gracefulness of your face. So the turn basically has two steps in it. It's once to the front with your hands open. So you take your right foot and you put it out. And look at the audience. That's the first step. And then you turn your face to the back Whoa, with your great, steps. Yeah. One, two. One, two, two three, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> That's called a chakra. Chakra means turn. Chukar. So we have this movement. It's called, um, you go like this. So you don't move your shoulders and you just move your head. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma taught me how to do it like years ago. Salam Esmim and Nusheen Hast. That means, hi, my name is Nusheen in Farsi. We are at Flame Kebab, and this place is very important to me because I love watching people enjoy my culture, my culture's food. It makes me feel happy that people are enjoying what I enjoy as well. I love that there's like authentic Iranian food and not like knockoff kebab. kebab. <laughs> but, um, well, basically, this is a kebabi, so it's all kebab, which um, they're kind of like rolls of meat that you put on a skewer and you grill it. And um, there's uh, kubide, which is beef kebab. There's um, lamb. Every time I come here, I get kubide. What is that? That's the beef kebab. You can try the eggplant dip. And then, yeah. And then most, or musir, masta musir is like right there. Yogurt. It's yogurt and actually no, that's the wrong one. That's yogurt and cucumbers. The, the also the kubida what she's talking about also it has spice in there. It's not yeah. really just talking about it has salt, pepper, and other spices. Kubida and chicken. Okay. Also it comes with the lentil rice, or you like it just with salad, whatever you like. Sure, I'll try. That.
This is Mastel Khiar, and that's, I don't bread. Noon? Yeah, we call it noon. Is that Napoleon? Uh, yeah. I've never had it. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> this is definitely not the original, but it still looks good. It's so. cold. Oh, yeah. oh, that's normal. It's not supposed to be hot. It looks beautiful. It, it is oh, no, the fine. most beautiful thing I've ever seen. One of. Are you going to take a picture? It's so pretty. It is pretty. We should do this again. Yeah, exactly. I feel normal with you guys. Yeah. Like, we've known each other for a long time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.